Alright folks, welcome to another beer review. We're going over to Farmbridge, having a look at Pardus, which is an Imperial Stout. Not just an Imperial Stout, but a chocolate orange Imperial Stout. And a very modest Imperial Stout at 8% ABV. Picked up by my good friend Adam from Mersey Beers, you've probably heard his name in quick succession on the last few reviews. Part of his uh, most recent hop drop. Sorry Brewdog for taking that name. Well, I don't expect James to come over because he's broken his collarbone. Probably been playing on a few too many rooftops, hasn't he? Are we outraged about them guys anymore? I don't know. Let's not throw shade on a different brewery when we're having a look at a beer from Thornbridge. So, it's harder to find a more perfect trio at this time of year than Chocolate Orange and Imperial Stout. These three work harmoniously in creating a truly multi-layered tasting experience. With the robust and roasty body of the Imperial Stout coming together with the velvety chocolate and both then being accentuated beautifully with the introduction of orange providing a fresh sip and a sweetness which doesn't overpower. Uh, hops are Bramling Cross. Vision is black. Sweet citrus cacao. Zesty licorice chocolate brownie tart and it does have instructions but I care not to read them so I mean this was canned on the 30th of November 2021 and best before date is the 30th of November 2022 so it's a, a little bit aged which is not always a bad thing and I've got a Thornbridge glass, which was kindly gifted to me by another wonderful gentleman, Harry from Blue Nose Beer Reviews. And it's just triggered something in me to add a, an additional layer of exciting content. I've got some dark chocolate orange from Tesco's from a while ago. Uh, zesty orange, dark chocolate, bold and citrusy, rich dark chocolate, brightened with a burst of citrus. So uh, we'll do a little bit of a pairing at the end, if anybody is interested. So 440ml can, just about to make myself a, a slightly vegan version of uh, IKEA meatballs and gravy. So I'm just waiting for the oven to preheat. And uh, where's that gone? Can I find it? Yeah, so I'm gonna try it with uh, this Bisto Swedish style meatball gravy granules. But I do actually have um, some frozen Ikea meatballs that I picked up on my last trip to Ikea. And uh, I also picked up a couple of sachets of of the actual instant version of their gravy, so just thought you'd like to know. But these are the uh, the meatballs that I have. Am I going to expand into food related content on a much more regular basis? Probably not, to be honest. Anyway, so beer in the glass then. And uh, that is a really, it's sort of like a dark chestnutty brown with just shy of two fingers worth of a nice, slightly beige looking head. It is looking very nice indeed with this rose gold tinted glass. And it does have that slight aroma you get from a lot of chocolate orange. Oh, got a big waft of it then. I've had a couple of beers prior to this. Yeah, definitely getting that sort of like orange essence, orange oils sort of character. 
which wasn't there in the first sniff, but just like all of a sudden, it just like said, hello, I'm here, and slapped me around the face. I think a lot of people would like to slap me around the face, to be honest. If anybody wants to do it to do it for free, save me paying someone to do it like I usually have to, then feel free to send me a message. But you get that nice muskiness from the, the malts from the beer. And there is a genuine chocolate orange aroma. Uh, does it say what they've used? For allergens, see ingredients. Well, I'm not seeing any ingredients. Yeah, chocolate orange, very much so. And even though it's been two months off a year being in the can, it's still coming out and it smells really, really damn good. I will just preface this review by saying that I have only just really taken it out of the fridge. So we'll see if that plays part in masking any of those flavors, which are supposed to be there. But on the nose, it smells really damn good. And it's got me thinking at this time of the year, why don't they produce like a chocolate orange candle? Because I think that'd be absolutely fantastic. It is like opening a bar of chocolate orange with slightly dark chocolate and getting a good whiff. They've captured that perfectly on the aroma. Anyway, let's see what their 8% stout can do. Cheers. Oh wow, they've, they've nailed it. I think the last time that I really enjoyed a chocolate orange beer would be the, um, oh, that Cloudwater Persistence's Utile, the chocolate orange edition. But that was a much heavier um, stout, to be fair. Prior to that, I have tended to be a little bit let down by chocolate orange style stouts, but I tell you what, they've absolutely nailed it. And for an 8% stout, it's got a wonderful body and mouthfeel to it. It's not like big chewy or anything like that, but there's this really nice, like oil slick. Can't say I've actually drank an oil slick before but that's the impression it's giving. But like velvety and almost like melted chocolate. It really, really is. It's capturing a chocolate orange perfectly. I can't fault it. I mean, it's exactly what it's offering. But it's not too ridiculous either because you can just taste a really well brewed and executed stout. Is it technically imperial? I don't know actually what the what you can legally call imperial stout. Um, I don't know what the guidelines are, or even if there is a strict like guideline in that respect. But then again, it could harken back to like the the tradition of putting imperial on a beer. But that flavour's there. It really, really is. This is one of those examples where if you don't like chocolate orange, don't waste your time picking this up. Because a lot of people who don't like something will buy something that includes something they don't like and then they'll just kick off and moan and bitch about it. And it's like, well, that would be like me, right? spending a shit ton on like a a really hard to find or expensive farmhouse ale drinking it and getting annoyed because it encapsulates what a farmhouse ale is do you know what i mean and we do tend to find a lot of knobheads uh, within the world of craft beer mainly in the consumer base 
myself well and truly included. There's a big part of me now saying, probably should have waited to open this towards Christmas time. And I nearly dropped the glass there, which would have been absolutely tragic. But yeah, just, I just felt like cracking it open. I really, really did. Almost a year uh, since it's been canned and it's tasting amazing i'm not sure what it would taste like fresh but yeah i'm very very impressed even like you've got you know the aftertaste you get when you've eaten chocolate and you even though you've obviously ingested the chocolate but like the slight oils have come out and coated your mouth it's like i've had some really nice dark chocolate orange so it feels like I've eaten chocolate orange. And I think that's what a lot of, just by design, beers like this, it's going to be really hard to nail that. It's like a lot of peanut butter inspired sort of like beers. Most of the time, through no fault of the brewers, they don't always nail it. And I think chocolate orange beers, nine times out of ten, don't always nail it. That's not to say the people who have brewed the beer have brewed a bad beer. It's just really hard to find that balance and to include those flavours in the confines of an alcoholic beverage. Do you know what I mean? So I think Formbridge have done an absolutely amazing job with this. And not just that, it's a really damn good beer. And this is chilled down as well, which I know is a bit of a, like, a point of contention. But I do sometimes find stouts, doesn't have to be imperial, but stouts that have got a fair few adjuncts in them do sometimes benefit from drinking at a slightly cooler temperature. They really do, and I don't know what I'm doing with this beer can. Just tapping all the little bits and bobs into there. But if you like chocolate orange and you can still pick yourself up a can of this, look past the canned on date, look past the best before date. I think with what they've included in it, don't really see too many flavours dropping off in such a drastic fashion. So you're going to get a very satisfying drinking experience. And to age this beer review terribly uh, if it's coming up to Christmas and you're either making yourself a beer advent calendar or you're making a loved one um, we'll put loved one in a quotation marks maybe you're trying to kill you know an alcoholic off by making them a beer calendar or maybe you're a long-suffering spouse who's just sick to death of their annoying other half I think this would be a really good, especially coming towards Christmas, although chocolate orange, not necessarily a Christmas thing. Although that being said, a lot of people I know do tend to really enjoy like a Terry's chocolate orange around Christmas, which I'm all for, but I can enjoy Terry's chocolate orange 365 days of the year. It's like Yorkshire puddings. People tend to only have Yorkshire puddings with like a Sunday roast or midweek roast or like a Monday roast, whatever. What's wrong with just getting like like a six, like a pack of Aunt Bessie's Yorkshire puddings, just putting them in the oven and just pouring gravy on it? It's not the most substantial meal and by far a healthy meal, but you know, you, you don't have to just have Yorkshire puddings with a roast. You can have Yorkshire puddings with whatever you want and you can have them however you like. So I think chocolate orange goes uh, with that as well. Although I was trying to make a Christmas sort of uh, thing. Like pigs in blankets. 
just make pigs and blankets if you want pigs and blankets. Don't wait for an occasion to have pigs and blankets. Don't get me started on pigs and blankets. Really, just do not mention it anymore. So yeah, the beer itself, this is the end of the beer review. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. However they've tried, however they've implemented the orange into this, it's worked. And the chocolate character, I'd imagine they'd probably use like cacao nibs or something like that, but it, it works wonderfully well and I would very much recommend this. So if you've tried it, let me know your thoughts, opinions down below. Are you a fan of Thornbridge? What are some of your favourite Thornbridge beers? Do you like Adam from Mersey Beers? Uh, let me know in the comments. If you say anything negative about him, you're getting blocked and I'm calling the police. But yeah, thank you Adam for uh, picking this up for me. It's well good. It's really nice. And uh, Thornbridge, wonderful beer, wonderful beer. So yeah, links in the description. If you want to see a morbidly obese blonde guy eat some chocolate like a pig, then feel free to watch this next few minutes. It could go on to 10 minutes, but it is what it is. Chocolate's already open. I picked this up midweek on a random shopping trip, which my money used to be depleted by making unnecessary beer orders, but since uh, my best friend has uh, got a car, a lot of my money has just been spent on random shopping trips. And I'm not talking about like clothes shopping or anything like that, food shopping. So uh, I, I could never be in a situation where I could save a, you know, a good amount of money. And the great thing about this, the, the chocolate's already snapped for me from whoever's taking the last bite but um yeah so a lot of my money's just been like wasted on like random little mini shopping trips i mean we took a random drive can you put random more times in a beer review peter i don't know we'll try though so we went to like marks and spencers in st Helens. um no respect to people in St. Helens, but aside from some really interesting architecture, give me six, to quote Dave Spikey. But we're in Marks and Spencers for some reason in um, St. Helens, and uh, I saw that they were doing little tubs of Endia paste on sale for a pound. Do you know how long I've try to find and do you i mean i could order it online i could go to uh like um what are they called delhi or whatever what have you but um i was overjoyed when i actually found you could get the actual like a slice of the sausage in tesco's but when i saw that you could get and do your paste from Marks and Spencers and it was reduced to a pound. I was like, I'll pick up a few jars of it, do you know what I mean? So yeah, that's what my uh, money has been going on. So I think that plays part and parcel as to why you've not seen too many beer reviews because I've just not really been buying too much beer, to be honest. And if it has, it's just been quite generic, easy drinking. Don't need to make a video about it. Beers from the supermarket. So shoot me in the head for not supporting uh, the independent brewing scene. Although it's payday soon, so trip to Northern Beer Temple, well and truly on the cards. So yeah, Tesco's Zesty Orange Dark Chocolate, 22nd rule. I do love chocolate orange. What a flavour combination that is. And uh, I've already had a couple of slight uh, slathers of this chocolate and it's, it's really nice and affordable. 
So that's what it looks like. And I've just realised, because you can't see my face, just how big I am at this angle. So let's have a, a bite of it. And when I say bite, stuff it all in your mouth. Oh my God. That is so good. So, so good. With orange essential oil. It doesn't have the, like, um, like the percentage of how dark the chocolate is, but it's a little bit dark. It's got that bitterness you expect from a, a good dark chocolate. But man, from a supermarket, can't go wrong. Dirty um, dish towel there. What do you call that that you dry your dishes with? Do you call it a dish towel? Can I spark a, is it called BAP? Is it called Krusty Roll? Is it called Bar Cake sort of thing? Man. It's, it's so seamless. It really, really is. And in fact, it adds like an almost another level of indulgence for the beer. Oh, that's good. Oh my God. Do I need to actually make myself vegan meatballs? Borderline arousal, that's what I'm going to say. Oh. The orange aspect in both, in both the beer and the chocolate comes out more when they're working in a collaborative way. Win, win, together. This is why I'm fat, essentially. Mm. Oh my God. so good so yeah winner winner chocolate orange dinner well it's not going to be a chocolate orange dinner it's going to be a vegan meatball in a knockoff Ikea gravy dinner but I'm happy as a pig and shit right now with that combination and that beer is amazing it's really damn good really really good and that chocolate is very good especially for a home brand I'm not going to have any uh, beer left to take home now. So any um, food fetishists, I hope I've got you off. So there's a bit of spilled um, carrot and potato soup. Made a batch of that today. Very nice, especially for when the nights uh, draw in a bit quicker. Um, it'll probably still be in the freezer in about six months time but hey ho it is what it is so um, yeah that chocolate orange from Tesco's works 
amazingly well with that form bridge beer and um, what more can I say really uh, so that's 25 minutes of your time that you're not getting back uh, but would you rather watch this or watch that continuing droning of uh, the Queen's death I mean no disrespect but fuck it We're not going to get into it. I'm probably that was very limp wristed. Uh, I'm not going to get into it because it is what it is. Uh, not that I'm like happy that she's passed away. I'm just a little bit indifferent. Um, so if that makes me a bad person, then um, hell certainly sounds good at this time of year. Although saying that, it's rarely still warm, so. Um, Greta Thunberg might have a point, even though she's an aggravating little shite of a person. I think the male equivalent of Greta Thunberg would be James Corden. And, um, in fact, no, I think James Corden is one of the most aggravating, pandering, Utter arseholes. Oh, but I really like Fat Friends. I really like the History Boys. History Boys is a really good film. I really like Fat Friends. I really like History Boys. Oh, I love Kevin and Stacey. James Corden is a twat. He's an absolute annoying twat. And uh, how the fuck, out of all the people to come out of England, he got the job for whatever daily, late night, tedious talk show. Do you know what I mean? Letterman retired ages ago. Nobody who's doing that sort of daily show is enjoyable to watch. Especially the British ones. What's his face? The little glasses. Oh my God, just don't, don't get me started. Don't get me started. I'm going to wank off to a Jordan Peterson podcast now. So uh, yeah, thank you for watching. You'll take care, stay safe and uh, chocolate and beer. It works. Ooh.